this episode, we discuss setting up your local SK instance, getting it ready for SK development. You will hear more about tenants, size, and benefits of using techniques like shared content presentation during development. So to set everything up, I think we need some um, we need some site for the client, of course, for the for the content. But I think it make all, makes also sense to have a shared site uh, which holds all the presentation items so that only we as developers access and we can manage items centrally and also have an, an easier time to, to serialize the items uh, using, uh, we haven't discussed yet if we want to use Unicorn or TDS, but um, anyway, we need to serialize, serialize items into our uh, code repository. So if we have them in one side and not spread across all sites, I think that makes our lives easier. So let's let's create the chat site. And then uh, we actually have to clean up the site, uh, especially the client side from all the items that are there out of the box from site uh, from SXA and um, yeah, have especially those items like styles, rendering variants, um, page and partial designs um, yep. just located in the shared site wherever we can share things. Uh, of course, if there's something very special to one site, we could add that also to that particular site. Yeah, and I think that that will really help us with our with our whole multi-site strategy, right? Yeah, and perhaps it's not like a hard requirement right now, but we do know that in the near future there will be more sites, mm -hmm. uh, and having it all, oh, having it all being accessible through shared, well, sources that that definitely makes uh, any future investments uh, pretty well lower than you would normally have. Uh, and therefore also speeding up their time to market as well. So yeah. yeah. So let's get into Sitecore and create sites. So <laughs> let's log into uh, Sitecore. This is a fresh uh, Sitecore 9.3 environment having SXA installed. And um, yeah, let's simply create a tenant and a site. So in SXA, uh, you always require a tenant uh, first. So this is the mandatory structure. And um, because within the tenant context, you have later on uh, certain sharing capabilities that you do not have outside this tenant context. So this way you can separate things very well, uh, but also combine things very well and share content within a tenant. Uh, you have further uh, abilities to, to structure it uh, using tenant folders, and this can be quite like sophisticated, but I think uh, in most cases you will just have a tenant and a site. But if you need to structure further, for sure you have those capabilities. So let's create a tenant. And as this is a fresh instance, nothing is cached. Um, so as SXA requires the PowerShell extension, um, it also runs most of the wizards using some PowerShell scripts in the background. And uh, the first thing you have to do is provide a name. Um, Mark, what was the name of uh, uh, the tenant? Was it SXA tutorial? Yeah. SXA tutorial. And now you have the, uh, the ability to install certain modules. Um, modules are, let's say, items that are installed for you in certain areas like the media library or in forms or um, yeah, in, in, in certain areas of your site installation. Um, so usually, I think on tenant level, there's not much that you don't want to have. Um, so this is fine. But uh, if you go for a production release, you might want to rethink um, if you really need all the modules because you can also install them later at any time. So for the for the tenant creation, I think we want to use everything. We want to use forms. We want to use error handling. So let's just go for it. And now the PowerShell script is running, creating um, the new tenant for us. And uh, the tenant will not only consist uh, or um, be there in our content area, but it will also create folders in the template section and in the media library. And as I said, also in, in the forms area here. So let's give it some time. And even though it doesn't say it's done, it's uh, done. So here's our new um, tenant. And now let's create our first site. So again, we have the insert options here to structure further inside folders, uh, but we will just create a new site. 
Uh, and what will be the name of the site? I think for our development side, we should probably go with company dev. Mm -hmm. Company dev. Capital dev. Whatever you prefer. OK. Um, we can also directly provide a host name. If we just make it star, then it will be just available under this, uh, uh, under the host that we have here and probably require some kind of um, um, site parameter to differentiate between different sites. We can also use virtual folders um, so that it will be, the site will be available under uh, like our domain slash and then the virtual folder. And we can uh, create the site in a certain language. So currently, as this is a fresh instance, I have only the English language um, configured. So yeah, just to just to add, you can mm -hmm. always change your settings later, right? If you yeah. want to use a different host name, want to want to make change, you can. There's always option to do that afterwards as well. Yeah, exactly. So there's one item holding this configuration, uh, so that that you just have to navigate to, and then you you are able to change that. Then again, you have a list of modules, which again would install certain uh, components to your site. So for our um, um, shared dev site, this is the the, the site we are just creating, I will keep uh, all modules now. Or what do you think? Um, should we should remove some? Uh, I think it's fine now to have all the modules available during development. Yeah. Uh, if we go create the client site later on, then we should slim it down a bit, probably. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then the fourth tab is about theming, and. For now, we will just use one of the wireframe themes. You see that there are two available, a deprecated one, which is a comic sans appearance, I would say, like drawn with a with a pencil on a sheet of paper. And the uh, new wireframing theme is a bit more like has more of a fresh design. We could also create a new theme here, but SXA 9.3 introduced a new way of creating themes using an SXA command line interface. Uh, which offers um, yeah, more benefits to, to front-end developers, especially in the workflow. So this is also how we will do it later. So that's why I think let's just assign the wireframe for now. And last but not least, uh, we have the grid tab here to choose from one of the four default grids that are offered. Um, the default would be Bootstrap 4. I think this is also what we are going to use. There's an older version, uh, Bootstrap 3, also available here, and then Foundation and Grid 960. Um, worth mentioning, I think, is that this only um, only installs the grid part of Bootstrap, so you do not have all the styles for the grid. Uh, so sorry for the Bootstrap components. So it's just handling the grid to keep it also as small as possible. If you require further styles of Bootstrap, you can still uh, put them in a theme later and and assign it to to your site. So then let's create a site. Cool. And now we wait. Yes, <laughs> but not very long. No. So the PowerShell strip runs, creating all the items that are required. Um, and yeah. Yeah, perhaps it's, it's during while we're waiting, it's, it's also worth mentioning that uh, as you saw in the dialog window Sebastian just showed, it's all those functionalities you can add yourself, all those modules and those features. There are obviously also options to remove those if you have created them already, uh, and you can add new ones uh, as well. Yeah. I think we will use those features also um, later on. Yeah, well, yeah, we're definitely going to uh, well show how you make it a bit more author friendly. Let's call it that like that. Mm -hmm. So you can see all the different modules being installed here. So, and here we are. So we have our first site. And if we take a look at the site, uh, it comes directly uh, with a home node, uh, which contains then all our um, pages later on. It has an overlay folder for certain light boxes or overlays that we can build. Um, it has a it has a um, path to the media library, so you can directly access media library from the 
uh, from your site tree. Um, it has a folder uh, called data containing all, yeah, containing folders for your data sources for the different renderings that we have installed now through the module uh, in the site creation process. And then we have our dictionary and we have all the presentation related assets like rendering variants, uh, partial uh, and page designs, and also the available renderings handling our toolbox later. And a few settings uh, most prominent, I would say, is the site grouping. As I mentioned, uh, we can change here the host name, virtual folder, and all that, that, all that information we have provided uh, when we created a site. 